Welcome to Massive Open Online course on basic principles and calculations in chemical engineering. So, we are discussing about uh, the energy and its forms uh, under module 6. Now, under this module, uh, today we will uh, discuss more about that energy and its forms uh, uh, and we will discuss uh, about the standard heat of a formation. In the previous lecture, we have uh, described laws of thermodynamics, uh, even thermodynamic properties like enthalpy and entropy and how to calculate that uh, enthalpy change uh, based on you know phase change as well as uh, without phase change based on the uh, material characteristics like uh, uh, specific heat of heat of uh, specific heat of its particular uh, you know uh, temperature uh, 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 and also uh, specific heat uh, capacity at a particular you know uh, uh, pressure and uh, uh, you know constant volume. So we have uh, I think discussed and also we have done some uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know examples uh, uh, and uh, based on which how to calculate that uh, uh, enthalpy changes and how this enthalpy changes can be assessed. So, in this case uh, we will discuss uh, uh, about that uh, heat of formation when uh, there will be a, you know certain uh, you know uh, chemical reactions and during that reactions how uh, when heat will be you know released or adsorbed and based on that uh, release and adsorption of that heat how you can calculate that uh, enthalpy for the formation of particular compounds uh, there in the uh, reaction uh, and also uh, in necessarily occurring substance what should be that heat of formation that we will discuss here. And also uh, how that heat of formation can be uh, calculated uh, if there is a change of phase of that particular components there in the mixer. So, before going to that we have to go through again uh, that what is uh, enthalpy we have already described uh, uh, about that uh, enthalpy and what is the definition and uh, we have uh, actually uh, narrated about that uh, enthalpy that uh, it can be uh, you know a, a you know property of a system uh, which will be capable to do non mechanical work and capable to release heat and uh, it is generally a function of state and its value uh, depends on uh, you know the starting and final state of the system and uh, quantitatively uh, that enthalpy can be calculated uh, based on the you know what will be the internal uh, you know energy changed uh, if uh, any uh, uh, heat or work done by the system or on the system there. And also uh, what will be the you know uh, flow energy is you know their change because of that. Uh, if any work by shaft is uh, done on the system or that system uh, is uh, doing some work uh, uh, on a particular fluid element and uh, based on who is how that uh, flow energy will be changed. And based on that uh, internal energy change and flow energy change how uh, that enthalpy can be you know uh, calculated or estimated that we have already uh, given uh, uh, or discussed uh, uh, in our uh, previous lectures uh, there. And uh, based on that enthalpy calculation also how to calculate that specific enthalpy just you have to you know divide that enthalpy uh, uh, by uh, its you know uh, moles or uh, mass then you can get that specific enthalpy there. And uh, also we told that uh, the uh, change in enthalpy can occur because of that change in temperature. Uh, because uh, specific heat capacity depending on the temperature and uh, also this enthalpy change can be uh, resulted uh, because of the change in phase and also uh, how that solutions uh, and their components are mixing uh, with other components also they are uh, uh, it depends on how what will be the amount of enthalpy is supplied or released to the system. Also uh, this change of enthalpy can be happened because of that uh, reactions there. So, we will uh, discuss all those things uh, one by one uh, already we have discussed that how enthalpy can be you know calculated uh, if there is a temperature change and also how that enthalpy can be calculated uh, if there is a you know phase change so still we will discuss here about that. Now, we have calculated that sensible heat because of that temperature difference and this is basically enthalpy change uh, because of that temperature and uh, when heat is transferred to raise or lower the temperature of a 
material in the absence of uh, you know phase change then it will be regarded as a sensible heat and uh, uh, it depends on that uh, specific uh, you know heat capacity of that material at a constant volume or at constant uh, pressure and uh, its unit generally joule per mole per k and uh, heat capacity of the material uh, this is uh, you know uh, defined by that uh, Cp uh, is equal to what is the change of enthalpy per unit uh, change of temperature that will be uh, called as you know uh, uh, heat capacity and if it is uh, uh, done per uh, unit mole or mass uh, then it will be uh, called as specific heat capacity. Uh, similarly, uh, this specific heat capacity uh, you know be assessed for constant temperature and constant uh, pressure and also constant volume. Now, uh, if there is no change of temperature of course, then there will be no sensible heat there. So, we can say that that uh, a specific heat capacity cannot be changed it will be constant there. So, specific heat capacity for most substances uh, generally varies with uh, you know temperature where the values of Cp vary for the range of change in temperature there. So, here example is given for nitrogen gas at one atmosphere in the slides. These slides also earlier uh, shown that how specific heat capacity at constant pressure and constant volume depending on that temperature. Specific heat capacity at constant pressure generally depends on uh, you know the temperature uh, as a you know uh, polynomial uh, function whereas, uh, specific heat capacity uh, at constant volume actually shows the functionality of temperature as a linear function there. And uh, specific heat capacity for the mixer uh, we have also uh, discussed about that it is uh, actually uh, uh, depending on that uh, you know uh, what is the you know volume fraction or mole fraction of that components are present uh, in the mixer. So, it depends on this molar fraction or mass fraction of these uh, components in the mixer and uh, it can be calculated by you know uh, the product of that mole fraction and the specific heat capacity of the pure substances there. If there are more than one uh, components of course, you will be there uh, or more than two components then uh, uh, accordingly you have to you know first find out what should be the uh, mole fractions or mass fraction then what should be the you know specific heat capacity for individual components simply by product of those uh, you know variables and summing up you will get that uh, specific heat capacity of the mixer. If you know that specific heat capacity then you can calculate that uh, what should be the enthalpy change. If uh, you know that uh, Cp is constant that means specific heat capacity is constant then simply you can calculate that you know enthalpy change uh, uh, by this equation. And uh, if you are uh, you know having the change of uh, uh, specific heat capacity with temperature then uh, you have to you know calculate this enthalpy change based on that integral form of that you know enthalpy. Uh, just by multiplying molec uh, molar uh, flow rate or mass flow rate with this you know uh, integrated value of this you know specific heat capacity within a certain range of temperature. That uh, temperature range can be you know uh, defined from the reference temperature to a certain temperature there. So, this reference temperature may be you know that for standard from standard condition like it may be you know 30 degree uh, Celsius and one atmospheric pressure or you can take that reference temperature at 273.15 uh, Kelvin or 0 degree Celsius there. And uh, the coefficients for that uh, you know specific heat capacity which are expressed uh, based on polynomial function is uh, uh, that is uh, depending on that uh, uh, nature of uh, you know substances there. Main focus on this lecture is to you know estimate that heat of formation there. Now, uh, change of enthalpy with the chemical reactions if you are talking about uh, that there is a certain reaction happens there and uh, uh, that reaction is uh, taking place uh, between some you know uh, reactants and which will give you some products. So, in that case you will see that there will be certain changes of you know enthalpy during that reaction. Now, that uh, uh, change of enthalpy or heat you can say that comes uh, from sensitive uh, heat or also uh, this actually uh, being contributed by, uh, by the you know that uh, heat of formation of that individual components like here reactants if it is reactants. Then uh, you have to you know uh, uh, consider that uh, heat of formation for this you know of uh, particular uh, 
you know analysis of enthalpy for that uh, chemical reactions. Now, uh, to take account of that possible uh, energy changes caused by reaction in the energy balance, uh, then you have to incorporate uh, in that enthalpy of each individual constituent uh, at operating condition and uh, an additional quantity uh, termed as a standard heat of formation. So, you, uh, you have to uh, you know add uh, that standard uh, heat of formation with that uh, sensible heat uh, change with respect to temperature there uh, uh, to find out the total you know heat of reaction. Now, how to you know find out that heat of formation of individual components uh, based on that you know uh, heat released or uh, heat absorbed uh, during that reaction. Once you know that uh, uh, amount of heat released or amount of heat uh, absorbed by that reaction from that uh, you know uh, you know uh, heat absorption or heat uh, uh, you know generation you can calculate that heat of formation of that individual uh, constituent or components in the uh, reaction mixture. So, for that uh, uh, you can define that uh, uh, heat of formation by this you know equation here. Here delta H f uh, at a standard condition that will be equals to you know delta H i minus uh, you know sensible heat uh, because of that uh, temperature differences. So, this uh, H uh, uh, f i uh, 0 hat is basically the standard heat of formation at a standard condition like you know 298 degrees degree uh, Kelvin and uh, 1 atmospheric pressure. And this delta H i is uh, you know uh, basically the heat released or absorbed by the chemical reaction that is obtained by experimentation. And uh, after getting this uh, heat released or absorption by experiment you have to subtract this uh, sensible heat within a certain range of temperature there. So, after getting this uh, you know uh, subtraction of uh, this uh, you know sensible heat from the heat of reaction you can regard it as uh, uh, a heat of formation of that particular constituents. Now, uh, in this case uh, uh, we are not considering that there is no phase change. So, within a certain phase uh, that will be you know it will be con considered, but whenever phase change will be there then you have to you know consider also that uh, sensible heat for uh, phase change there. What is the definition of that heat of formation, standard heat of formation? The standard heat of formation of a compound is the enthalpy change that is associated to the formation of one mole of compound at 25 degree Celsius and one atmosphere from its elemental constituents as they are normally found in a cell. Like some compounds carbon, oxygen, uh, uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, they are actually necessarily occurring uh, you know uh, compounds or constituents you can say and uh, uh, these are elemental constituents. So, in this case uh, all these you know compounds uh, uh, will have that standard heat of formation of you know uh, 0 uh, because those who are necessarily you know form that compounds uh, the heli heat released will be you know uh, 0 or formation of that components uh, requiring that uh, heat will be equals to 0. So, that is why uh, you have to define that the standard heat of formation for a particular substance which are not actually necessarily occurring uh, uh, substances. So, that can be obtained from that particular uh, uh, you know heat release or heat absorption uh, by the reaction of that components with other you know constituents there. So, uh, enthalpy change if the uh, phase, phase change is there. So, in that case uh, you know that additional terms for the enthalpy of the phase change is to be considered to give the total enthalpy of the substance. Like here this heat of formation will be is equal to here uh, that is experimentally obtained uh, heat released or absorption there and what should be the sensible heat that you have to subtract and also you have to subtract that what will be the uh, enthalpy change because of that uh, phase change there. So, this uh, uh, enthalpy change because of that phase, phase change will be equal to here delta HTP. We have uh, actually uh, discussed about that you know uh, uh, that phase change like you know from solid to uh, liquid and then liquid to vapor there is a transition 
and for converting that certain moles of uh, liquid to vapor or vapor to solid or uh, uh, even liquid to solid or solid to liquid and uh, that transition uh, uh, heat release or heat requirement for that uh, it is called uh, you know that uh, uh, heat of uh, you know phase change or it is called related heat of uh, you know uh, certain phase change there. If suppose solid is uh, converting to you know uh, liquid then it will be called as uh, you know latent heat of uh, you know uh, phase change of uh, uh, solid to liquid and even liquid if it is uh, converting to vapor then it will be latent heat of vaporization there. So, in this way again uh, uh, we can say that uh, whenever uh, we are having this phase change uh, during the formation of the compounds uh, and also in the reaction then you have to consider that heat of formation but just by you know subtracting that you know uh, uh, heat of uh, subtracting that heat of uh, you know phase change from that uh, heat of reaction as well as the subtraction of the sensible heat uh, within a certain range of temperature from that uh, heat of uh, reaction there. So, here uh, one you know that uh, 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 systematic you know that uh, conversion of the uh, or you can say that uh, phase change is uh, shown here for you know uh, solid to you know uh, vapor how it is actually changing in this case uh, generally solid at uh, if we are considering water. So, water actually uh, becomes a solid when uh, it is at 0 degree Celsius then solid uh, you know water uh, at 0 degree Celsius whenever it will be you know becoming to liquid then at that 0 degree centigrade you have to you know uh, apply some uh, enthalpy or heat energy there. So, that it will become that uh, you know uh, solid to liquid just by melting. So, this uh, you know uh, converting this uh, solid to liquid at that 0 degree Celsius it will be uh, you know uh, requiring some uh, enthalpy or heat. So, that heat will be called as latent heat of you know that uh, uh, melting there. And similarly uh, that liquid uh, whenever you know uh, uh, changing its temperature from 0 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius then you will see there will be you know sensible heat change uh, within this uh, you know temperature range of uh, 0 to 100 degree Celsius. And uh, again uh, at that uh, you know 100 degree Celsius uh, you will see that liquid will uh, you know become uh, uh, vapor and during this uh, conversion of this uh, liquid to vapor at 100 degree Celsius there will be some heat uh, you know uh, required that uh, heat uh, requirement uh, is called uh, latent heat of uh, you know vaporization. So, this uh, you know transition null uh, you know uh, enthalpy that is latent heat of uh, you know melting or uh, vaporization uh, those are actually happened at a constant temperature there. So, uh, uh, this uh, whenever this phase change will be uh, there, there will be certain heat requirement. Again uh, uh, if, uh, if you are uh, uh, heating this vapor uh, from 100 degrees Celsius to you know certain uh, temperature like T, then there will be again that uh, certain you know uh, heat uh, you know requirement and that heat requirement. Uh, uh, is called that sensible heat uh, within this temperature range of 100 degree Celsius to uh, temperature T. Now, uh, again you know that if you are converting this uh, you know uh, this vapor to again directly to solid you will see that there will be a latent heat of uh, you know uh, solidification it is called sublimation. So, uh, again there will be a huge amount of you know heat is required to uh, you know convert this vapor to the solid at that temperature. Again uh, solid temperature to uh, temperature to uh, 0 degree Celsius there will be you know uh, releasing of heat uh, there then there will be you know that again uh, uh, sensible uh, uh, you know uh, uh, latent heat uh, or uh, sensible heat is required from you know uh, converting this solid uh, at temperature T to 0 degree Celsius. So, in this way there will be a cycle and uh, uh, to you know get this uh, you know materials of uh, solid to vapor and then vapor to solid like this. So, uh, these are called that uh, phase change. So, in this case uh, whenever phase change will be required what will be the enthalpy change that you have to calculate. Now, let us have an example for this phase change uh, from solid to vapor for you know phenol. Now, phenol if we consider that uh, 
at uh, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, you know, uh, at one atmospheric uh, uh, pressure, uh, this is at a standard condition. This uh, phenol, if we, you know, uh, heat, uh, heat it up uh, to 42.5 degrees Celsius, you will see that uh, this phenol uh, uh, will change its, you know, uh, you know, uh, will, uh, will, 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 uh, will, uh, will, will uh, heat up uh, uh, because of that, you know, uh, sensible heat there. This phenol basically as a solid, we can say that at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. And if you heat it up to 42.5 degrees Celsius, there will be a certain heat uh, requirement or enthalpy requirement. That enthalpy requirement is called that, you know, uh, uh, heat of, you know, of uh, sensible uh, to you know converting this material uh, from this uh, 25 degree Celsius to 42.5 degree Celsius. So, here in this case uh, some heat is required to you know heat it up from this uh, you know uh, reference temperature to the certain temperature. After that you will see that at that fixed temperature of 42.5 degree Celsius uh, at one atmospheric pressure this uh, solid phenol will become to liquid phenol. Now, in this case uh, uh, becoming that solid to liquid at that constant temperature uh, some heat will be required. So, that heat is uh, called uh, you know latent heat of you know uh, uh, melting. So, this uh, melting latent heat uh, uh, will be regarded as delta H2 here. Similarly, uh, uh, at that 42.5 degree Celsius whenever this solid uh, phenol will be becoming uh, liquid phenol and again it will be heated up to 181.4 degree Celsius and uh, at that uh, uh, liquid phase at uh, atmospheric pressure for that you will need some sensible heat of delta H3. And uh, again at that particular you know uh, uh, temperature of 181.4 degrees Celsius, this is basically that boiling point of uh, you know phenol. So, at this boiling point of phenol uh, uh, keeping this uh, temperature constant, you will see that uh, this liquid uh, will become uh, vapor. So, at that particular uh, temperature of 181.4 degrees Celsius without changing that temperature, you have to you know supply some energy or it will require some you know energy as an enthalpy change and uh, that enthalpy change is called latent heat of vaporization of this phenol. And after that if you uh, you know uh, want to you know heat uh, this vapor uh, you know uh, this uh, vapor this uh, phenol. Uh, up to you know 300 degree Celsius, uh, then uh, there will be you know some heat is uh, required that is uh, called sensible heat uh, uh, for this vaporization uh, state uh, from 181.4 degree Celsius to 300 degree Celsius. Again uh, at that 300 degree Celsius, if you want to you know change this vapor uh, up to a certain pressure, then you will have uh, you will also uh, require some you know uh, enthalpy. Uh, or supply of heat there. So, for that uh, you know that uh, uh, that heat also to be you know uh, you know uh, considered for that. So, totally uh, from this uh, uh, solid phenol at 25 degrees Celsius to you know convert it to vapor at 300 degrees Celsius at 3 atmosphere there will be a total uh, enthalpy required will be delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H plus delta H you know uh, 4 plus delta is 5 and delta is uh, 6. So, total enthalpy is required like this. Now, if you want to you know directly uh, convert this you know uh, solid phase to that uh, vapor phase, uh, hypothetically it will uh, require total uh, you know enthalpy as delta H. So, delta H will be equal to summation of this you know uh, delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, delta H4, delta H5 and delta H6. So, in this way that you have to calculate the enthalpy change uh, whenever uh, any materials uh, you know becoming uh, uh, vapor from its uh, solid state or uh, becoming you know solid from its uh, vapor state. Let us uh, do an example for this uh, uh, calculation of standard heat of formation from the standard heat of uh, generation or absorption by reaction that is experimentally estimated. Now, here uh, the following you know uh, reactions uh, 
you know 1 to 4 uh, there are uh, some enthalpy changes uh, during this reaction are observed experimentally uh, at uh, 25 degree Celsius in uh, standard state. Uh, in this case you have to calculate the standard heat of formation of uh, you know this propylene there. So, here uh, propylene is uh, you know converting into you know uh, different components there as per reactions. Respective reactions will uh, uh, released uh, or absorb some you know that uh, uh, heat energy that is uh, called enthalpy that enthalpy change is uh, given for you know respective uh, uh, you know reactions here in the slides uh, see. So, from this enthalpy change uh, uh, that is experimentally obtained you have to find out that what should be the you know standard heat of formation from this uh, uh, for this you know propylene substance. Now, according to this uh, reaction if we write if we consider that there will be reaction number 1, reaction number 2, reaction number 3 and reaction number 4 and their respective uh, you know that enthalpy of uh, you know reaction or uh, heat of reaction uh, it is there. Now, uh, according to his uh, law basically we can get this uh, heat of formation just by you know some adding or uh, you know subtracting or manipulating like by multiplying uh, subtraction or by addition of this uh, you know uh, equation and uh, also uh, corresponding you know enthalpies. So, in this case if you add this equation number 1 and 2 and uh, cancelling uh, the common constituents uh, from both the sides uh, we can get uh, this equation number 5. Uh, uh, you will see. So, accordingly that enthalpy also will come like this here delta H will be coming as here what is the you know that addition of 1 means here this minus 29.6 uh, plus uh, here minus 530.6 uh, kilocalorie per gram mole. So, in this way that uh, enthalpy can be you know they are uh, minus 560.2 kilocalorie. Now, uh, if we multiply the reaction 3 and uh, reaction 4 by 4 and 3 respectively and then adding then we can get uh, this equation number 6 here. Now, in this case again that enthalpy uh, correspondingly will be calculated uh, uh, by this uh, you know uh, equation uh, and in this case you have to multiply the enthalpy of this uh, you know say third equation by 4 and uh, the you know fourth equation by you know uh, 3 and then add it up you will get this uh, final value of minus 55 uh, 555.35 kilocalorie and reaction uh, uh, 6 and reaction 5 uh, if you subtract then uh, uh, it will uh, you know uh, result this equation uh, 7 and uh, finally you know that respective uh, you know that uh, enthalpy change will be coming as like this 4.85 kilocalorie. So, in this case uh, this equation number 7 is basically the formation of propylene uh, from this carbon and hydrogen. Now, this carbon and hydrogen uh, uh, you know that enthalpy change is you know 0. So, ultimately whatever enthalpy change is for you know that uh, you know propylene. So, this propylene formation uh, uh, will uh, you know uh, require this enthalpy change of 4.85 at that uh, you know standard condition. So, that is why this amount of 4.85 uh, you know kilocalorie for the formation of pro, uh, you know propylene will be uh, regarded as standard heat of uh, formation for this uh, propylene. And uh, heat of formation here is uh, uh, you know 4.85 kilocalorie uh, per gram mole and it is a positive. So, it is uh, basically you know that uh, endothermic reaction. Similarly, another example we can you know do for calculation of standard heat of formation from standard heat uh, uh, of generation or absorption by reaction that experimentally estimated. Now, in this case uh, an example like on the basis of data and the chemical reactions given below here in the slides find the heat of formation of zinc sulphate from the elements. Exactly the same way whatever we have done in the previous example uh, we can do we can calculate that you know heat standard heat of formation for this uh, formation of uh, uh, 
uh, zinc sulphate there. In this case again these four reactions are given and respective you know enthalpy uh, you know change for each uh, reactions are given here. Uh, and uh, uh, in this case again uh, uh, solution can be you know uh, obtained based on that uh, some manipulating uh, these uh, reactions as well as you know enthalpies respective enthalpies and uh, adding or subtracting uh, then we can get that uh, respective uh, value of that heat of formation. Now, let us do that uh, here first reaction is zinc plus sulphur that will give you the zinc sulphate and uh, zinc sulphide then uh, uh, its heat of uh, you know enthalpy uh, of that reaction is uh, uh, this uh, given here. Even second reaction zinc sulphide will again uh, react with oxygen it will give you zinc oxide and sulphur dioxide and heat of uh, reaction is minus 221.88 kilocalorie per kg mole. And this uh, produced sulphur dioxide again will uh, react with oxygen it will give you the sulphur trioxide and then uh, heat of reactions is uh, 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 will be you know that uh, 46.88 kilocalorie per kg mole. And then uh, again this zinc oxide uh, will be reacting with this uh, sulphur trioxide uh, which will give you that uh, zinc sulphate uh, by releasing that heat of you know uh, 55.10 kilocalorie per kg mole. Now, multiplying this reaction 1 by 2 and adding uh, to the reaction 2 uh, uh, yields this you know uh, reaction of this here. And finally, after you know cancelling the terms uh, in the right hand side and left hand side, uh, we can express this equation as uh, zinc plus sulphur plus oxygen that will give you zinc oxide plus sulphur dioxide and then you can get this uh, you know uh, uh, enthalpy of uh, after adding these enthalpies accordingly you know there. So, it will be coming as minus 309.88 kilocalorie. Now, again multiplying uh, the reaction 4 by 2 and adding to reaction 3, uh, we can get uh, this uh, final enthalpy as uh, minus 157.08. In this case, the reactions uh, are you know zinc oxide uh, uh, plus uh, SO2 and uh, plus oxygen that will give you that zinc sulphate. Again, uh, uh, if we consider this reaction as uh, you know equation number 6, then adding equation 5 and 6, uh, we can uh, represent this equation uh, like this and cancelling the common terms from both sides. We can get uh, this uh, zinc plus sulphur plus oxygen that will give you zinc sulphate there. Now, in this case this zinc is a necessarily occurring substance, sulphur is necessarily occurring substance, oxygen also that necessarily occurring compound. So, in this case this enthalpy is also 0. So, ultimately what happened this zinc sulphate is formed uh, uh, that uh, formation of the zinc sulphate will give you that here heat of formation standard heat of formation of the zinc sulphate at that standard condition. So, this uh, can be finally uh, calculated based on this you know his law of the summation of this uh, uh, enthalpy here from this equation from the enthalpies of uh, you know um, uh, equation of you know 5 and 6 there. So, this uh, L delta H is basically heat of formation of uh, 2 mole of zinc sulphate since it is produced 2 mole of zinc sulphate there. Hence, heat of formation in kg mole kilocalorie per kg mole of you know zinc sulphate uh, can be obtained just by dividing this uh, enthalpy uh, by 2 then you can get this uh, uh, finally minus 233.348. So, in this way you can uh, uh, easily calculate what will be the uh, standard uh, heat of formation of a particular substance. Uh, how to calculate that heat of formation including a phase change? Let us consider this uh, like uh, if the standard heat of formation for uh, you know that water uh, liquid is uh, minus 285.838 uh, kilo joule per gram mole and uh, the heat of uh, evaporation is uh, 44.012 kilo joule per gram mole at 25 degree Celsius and one atmosphere then what is the standard heat of formation of you know uh, water uh, uh, gas as a gas. So, in this case uh, uh, first consider that one gram mole of water uh, in this case we can proceed it uh, as to add the known uh, you know chemical equations and the phase transition to yield the desired chemical equation and carry out uh, the same operation on the enthalpy changes. So, in this case uh, standard heat of reaction can be you know 
defined as uh, summation of uh, standard heat of formation of the products and uh, also uh, you know uh, uh, subtracting uh, the summation of uh, the heat of formation of the reactants by this equation as given in the uh, slide. Now, in this case if we consider that uh, reaction A as here uh, hydrogen plus oxygen that will give you that uh, water just by releasing that uh, heat of reaction as uh, uh, you know minus 285.838 kilojoule per gram mole at its standard condition. And again uh, this uh, liquid water uh, it will become uh, that uh, gaseous uh, water just by changing its phase. Uh, and in that case uh, latent heat of vaporization at that standard condition uh, is uh, uh, 44.012 kilojoule per gram mole. Then we can uh, you know add it up these two equations and finally, we can have this you know hydrogen plus oxygen that will be equal to you know uh, water, but that uh, water will be in the vapor stage. Uh, stage. So, finally, we can calculate what should be the standard heat of you know uh, reaction for this. So, we can get this uh, standard heat of reaction for this component A and uh, also for the this uh, uh, we can say that uh, uh, standard uh, heat of vaporization there. Now, in this case standard uh, heat of reaction for this component A uh, uh, here or reaction A uh, that will be equal to standard heat of reaction for this uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, water formation and also uh, uh, you can say that uh, that can be obtained uh, you know that uh, that that you have to add the uh, heat of uh, latent heat of vaporization there then totally you will get this uh, total amount of uh, you know uh, uh, heat of uh, you know uh, reaction for this formation of gaseous uh, water molecule so this is basically the formation of you know gaseous uh, water molecule at this uh, you know uh, standard condition. So, this is basically obtained by this uh, enthalpy uh, or uh, enthalpy uh, of the reaction and enthalpy of this uh, vaporization which is called latent heat of vaporization. Finally, you can get it by just summing of these two uh, you can get this minus 241.826 uh, kilojoule per uh, gram mole. Now, let us uh, consider another uh, thing that enthalpy of solution how to calculate it. Now, the enthalpy of solutions uh, refers to the total amount of heat that is absorbed or released when the dissolution of a substance in a you know uh, solvent at constant pressure that will result in infinite uh, you know dilution. Now, this total uh, uh, enthalpy can be either positive or negative and uh, if uh, there is a positive enthalpy of solution results then you can say that will be your endothermic reaction. If uh, there is a negative enthalpy of solution results, then you can say that it will be exothermic reaction. Now, sometimes you will see that enthalpy of solution is uh, you know uh, referred to the enthalpy of dissolution or heat of uh, solution. Now, this heat of solution like all enthalpy changes is expressed in kilojoule per mole for a reaction that is taking place at standard condition there. Now, uh, there are you know uh, different processes actually. Uh, uh, considered to you know uh, uh, estimate that uh, enthalpy of solution. There are three process uh, process basically happened if there is suppose any solute is uh, dissolving in a uh, water solution. So, in this case uh, uh, like uh, sodium chloride if suppose sodium chloride is uh, you know dissolving in water. So, in that case what are the you know process involves there uh, to get this solution. Now, uh, in that solution sometimes uh, some heat will be required uh, to break the solute in the solution. So, that will be called uh, as process uh, uh, 1 and uh, for the you know uh, 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 breaking up of solute. In this case uh, like salt like uh, table salt sodium chloride is a molecule. In this case because the positive uh, sodium ion is attracted to the negative chloride ion at, at its you know molecular form. And uh, for that if you uh, they are stick together and uh, so to break that sodium chloride in the solution you will have to exert a certain amount of energy. That energy uh, is called that enthalpy of this process 1 and uh, it is uh, let it be your delta H1. Similarly, uh, in the solution you will see that whatever solvent uh, are being used in this case let it be water. So, you will see that uh, there will be you know that dissociation of the 
you know polar ions of that solvent happens and for that uh, some energy is required. So, water molecules are uh, partially that uh, having uh, negative poles uh, that is stick to that partially positive poles of uh, neighboring uh, water molecules there. So, it takes some energy to separate them. So, we call them enthalpy of this process like you know hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion there. So, there will be a, you know uh, some uh, energy requirement to dissociate, to dissociate that uh, polar ions there. Again uh, whenever solution uh, uh, to be made there will be some certain mixing uh, of that solute and solvent. So, to uh, you know mix that you know uh, solute and solvent there will be a certain energy requirement for that mixing. So, for that also uh, you have to consider that uh, uh, enthalpy uh, contribution to that uh, enthalpy of the solution. So, uh, energy requirement for mixing that case uh, solute and solvent have to mix together by applying some energy. So, we call the enthalpy for this process uh, let it be delta H 3. So, there are uh, three you know enthalpy changes are there only that uh, the enthalpy change uh, for the breaking up of you know uh, solute in the solution and uh, enthalpy change uh, for the you know uh, dissociation of polar ions of the solvent that is at uh, delta H 2 and energy requirement for the mixing of solvent and solute and let it be delta H 3. So, summation of these uh, you know three uh, contribution of you know enthalpy will give you the you know enthalpy of solution. Even the enthalpy of solution uh, that may be uh, uh, you know different for ideal and non ideal solution that the enthalpy of mixing of an ideal solution uh, basically uh, is 0 by definition, but uh, the enthalpy of dissolution of non electrolytes has been uh, you know has the value of the enthalpy of fusion or vaporization. For non ideal solution of electrolytes it is uh, connected to the activity coefficient of the solute and also this you know that breaking up the you know uh, molecules even uh, molecules of solvent and solutes also and the temperature uh, sometimes you know derivative of the relative permeability permittivity of the of the solution there. So, uh, in that case that uh, you know that uh, enthalpy of that uh, total dilution of that you know uh, 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 non ideal solution can be uh, defined by this equation here in this case. Uh, nu i is called uh, activity coefficients and gamma i is uh, basically the surface tension of that particular components and then here epsilon is uh, basically the relative permittivity of that you know components there. So, uh, this is basically change with respect to temperature. So, any activity coefficient is a factor uh, uh, which will actually uh, change that you know enthalpy uh, of that you know dilute solution. The activity coefficient is a factor used in thermodynamics to account the deviations from the ideal behavior in a mixture of chemical substance. And here in this uh, tables there are some uh, salts uh, at 25 degree Celsius how their molar enthalpy of the solution when they will be you know dissolved in uh, water is changing uh, these are given here. And uh, based on that his law you will see that molar enthalpy of the solution is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of formation of products minus reactant that already given uh, uh, example there like standard uh, molar enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride to be you know that minus 411.2 kilojoule per mole and standard molar enthalpy of formation of sodium ion uh, uh, for that dissociation that will be minus 240.1 kilojoule per mole or a standard molar enthalpy of formation uh, for that chloride ion it is minus 167.2 kilojoule per mole. So, according to that his law that uh, standard enthalpy of solution it will be equal to minus 240.1 kilojoule uh, 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 per mole minus 1.167.2 uh, um, kilojoule per mole plus 411.2 kilojoule uh, per mole that will be equal to 3.9 kilojoule per mole. Here this is uh, minus 1 is actually superscripts this uh, minus 1 is superscripts actually per mole here. So, this uh, please correct it here this will be you know molar uh, sorry uh, uh, per mole here kilojoule per mole this is. So, uh, we have uh, uh, so uh, discussed that how uh, heat of formation can be calculated from the heat of reaction and also uh, how heat of uh, standard heat of formation can be 
you know uh, calculated uh, from uh, uh, the you know uh, phase change uh, uh, and also heat of solution how to calculate based on their mechanism of dissociation and mixing and also you can say uh, uh, break up of solute in the solution. So, I would suggest you to go further about uh, this uh, uh, standard heat of formation uh, with some other examples also from this textbook and uh, practice it. And uh, in the next uh, lecture, we will uh, try to discuss uh, uh, you know that uh, about that uh, energy balance uh, uh, like uh, how to do that mechanical energy balance uh, and uh, also uh, other you know uh, energy balances based on reactions there. So, thank you for your uh, kind attention.